I've made a few differences in my thoughts of what stays and what goes in this garden to continue leaving something to harvest it again or to take it out is something that I have to balance very carefully. I have been so busy. It's been really hard for me to get out here in the garden because I've been processing so much of the abundance that we've had this year. I've been making pickled quail eggs and tomato sauce and fig preserves and apple slices in the dehydrator. You name it. We have just been going, going, going between Mrs. Elsie's generosity from her plants and ours. I have been just a busy, busy bee in the kitchen. Meanwhile, the garden is continuing to provide more abundance for future harvest. There is a ton of Kajari melons producing on these vines. I have lost count how many babies have been put on. And we finally got the rain that we so desperately needed, which has made everything just pop even more. So there's even more that we need to get harvested. These cherry tomatoes behind me are the older ones and they are cracking open and covered in ants. So I'm gonna have a lot of them that I have to throw to the ducks over the other side of the fence. <laughs> The fence is working great to keep the ducks out of the garden so that we are able to harvest our own produce instead of it going in their bellies. This is our second planting of these cherry tomatoes that we took cuttings off of. I see I have a tomato hornworm. This might be the one that Ryan already found, the hornworm, because he told me there was a hornworm in the garden that he got. Or maybe it's still here because I see more damage up here hmm do you guys see him is he still here or is this the one ryan already got i'll have to ask him which tomato plant it was on oh nope it's here so you always follow upwards they travel up the plant as they get fatter and fatter and fatter and they also do a really good job of blending in not just because they're green because they kind of look like fruit, don't they? The little head just looks like a, another fruit hanging there. If you look at it this way, I don't see a tomato hornworm, do you? What a tricky fella. That's a big one. That is a nice a big one. I actually might let that one pupate. I'm gonna grab it off and put it on some nightshades outside of the garden so that it can continue its journey to become a beautiful moth. It's funny, we have not had any rain at our location all summer, even though a lot of other people around us have had rain, but we're kind of on a hill and the clouds part and go around us. Even when there is rain forecasted in Georgia, we have not been receiving any of it. And now that it is finally coming, I'm a little irritated because it's starting to sprinkle while I'm out here harvesting. But it's not rain, it's just a little sprinkle and it actually feels quite nice. So I'm gonna continue harvesting and trying to get these vegetables that are ready in the house so that they can be processed along with everything else I have to do. I got 16 pounds of pawpaw fruit from a friend of mine and I've got a lot of work to get those put in the freezer. This water, this rain is making everything just split open. But the ducks are happy to use that harvest to their advantage. It's funny because Miss Elsie and I have been talking about how if we don't get some rain, we're not going to be able to seed our fall garden. So I've waited a little bit longer than I normally do. I normally have a lot of stuff in the ground as seeds. In the beginning of August, middle of August, and the end of August, I do three successional plantings of a lot of things. But because it has been bone dry and so hot, I haven't done it because I knew that it would not be a successful seed germination if I did. Now that we've gotten this rain that has been a steady couple of days of rain, it'll be perfect conditions for us to sow some fall seeds. And I'm kind of glad that this wait happened because I've made a few differences in my thoughts of what stays and what goes in this garden to continue leaving something to harvest it again or to take it out is something that I have to balance very carefully. 
is it going to give me more of a crop if I leave it or am I hardly going to get anything? Whereas my new seeded plants are definitely going to give me something, right? As long as we get enough rain this fall. <laughs> but either way, I've made some changes to my thoughts and ideas about my fall garden because of the weight. So I see it as a blessing, even if we get a little bit later planting than we intended. So after going through this plant and harvesting all of the tomatoes that I did, I'm seeing that there is just not a whole lot of green fruit. There is some, but there are dead plants. This plant has a little bit of green on the trunk down there, but it is dead all the way up where the fruit production happens. So this plant would already need to be pulled. So because I've planted this cherry tomato, right over there i feel confident that this is what should be pulled when i thought i was going to leave them because they were producing so well these cherokee purple that i had planned on leaving have gotten such a bad blight that i really don't feel like it's going to be worth leaving them so i will be harvesting the green tomatoes right before i pull them and these will be pulled and I had not planned on that still thinking these don't look so great 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 so basically these tomatoes have probably seen better days looks like I'm gonna probably have to make a green tomato relish or some fried green tomatoes maybe a little bit of both but the good news is I do have cherries still producing that I will continue to harvest from. I have some tomatoes in the lower garden that I have been able to harvest some off of, and I have these five here. So we'll have some fresh tomatoes still for ripe eating as they ripen. Not bad for an impromptu tomato picking. I'll take it. <laughs> Odin's probably gonna eat half of those cherry tomatoes when I walk in the door. <laughs> What's really been fun for me this year is finding new things that I will always grow in my garden. This right here is the snake gourd bean, which I find absolutely delicious. We cook it up and we just saute it with some butter, salt, and pepper. And it is fantastic. It's like a cross between a green bean and a squash. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Then we finally had a meal of the vining okra. I would say I probably needed to pick these sooner, but they grow really fast and they taste really good, almost like a cross between an okra and a summer squash. So that's been interesting and I like them. I will grow them again. And then this is my first of the wing beans. I don't know if I'm supposed to let them get bigger, but I'm gonna try them young and see how I like them. I haven't tried them yet, so this is just gonna be a taste test. And then my new favorite cucumber that I was growing this year from the Asian grocery store that had no label has been identified as a Korean cucumber. Thank you, Paige, for figuring that out for me because I will always grow these in my garden now. They are so good for sweet eating right off the vine as a snack or as a salad or she mentioned kimchi being made with it and i think that sounds fantastic and i gotta try that and they also make really good pickles i've made pickles with them and they're perfect nice crunchy crispy delicious i will always grow these now what are some plants that you grew this year that you've never grown before that you absolutely want to continue growing year after year something new you've tried or maybe something old that you just tried again and this time it just did really well let us know down in the comments. And then there's my favorite tried and true lemon squash. So easy to grow, delicious, just like a summer squash flavor and texture. They are wonderful. And the wonderful thing about them is they are resistant to squash vine borer. You see there's band borer damage, but they survive. These plants do not look sick. Look at them, beautiful, healthy green foliage. And they're still producing lots and lots of flowers and new baby fruit coming on everywhere I look. 
honestly, it's the only summer squash I grow anymore. Unless I get a whim and want to try something new. These are my standby, tried and true. What are some of your tried and true? What is something that you grow every year that you absolutely love? And why do you love it? Does it is it because it's pest resistant? Does it is it very prolific? Tell us the reasons down in the comments. Always the late summer superstar. Eggplant loves the heat of summer and I just harvested this one and it already had that much more fruit. And look how big it's gotten. And I, when I told you at the beginning of the season that I don't worry about flea beetles on eggplants because they still produce plenty of fruit, I never treated. I still have flea beetle damage all over these plants. There's a little guy right there. I do smush them, but I don't really apply anything to them because I don't want to hurt any pollinators. And the only thing that is effective with the hornworm is also effective against pollinators. So this is something I just let it go. Look at that. There's a big one in there. <laughs> and look how many baby fruit are producing. So even when I pull out these tomatoes, I'll probably go ahead and leave at least one of these plants to continue producing. Boy, the rain is really starting to come down a little bit more. <laughs> Don't know how much longer I'll be able to stay out here. Not bad for an impromptu late summer harvest in the rain. I think I've got some work to do today. While I do like canning some stuff, I do a lot of lacto-fermentation to make things into pickles, like okra and green beans, two of my favorites. I've got a whole bunch of that lacto-fermented into pickles. Um, I've frozen a lot of okra. The tomatoes I like to make into a sauce or a lacto-fermented salsa. I've made a lot of that this year, but we eat a lot of the tomatoes, like fresh. Like, my family is crazy about fresh summer tomatoes. The rain is really starting to pick up. The eggplant I like to roast and then freeze. The squash, the, the, um vining things you know you know the snake gourd and the vining okra do great frozen the summer squash does great frozen the fruit i like to dehydrate and um make into sauces i've made some applesauce i've made some dehydrated apples i've made fig preserves i've dehydrated figs so there's many different ways to preserve the harvest other than canning so don't limit yourself to just that enjoy the harvest fresh eat it every night we have not had to buy vegetables at all this summer at the grocery store except for lettuce when we do like taco night and i want lettuce then i'll buy lettuce because it doesn't grow well in the summer in georgia but everything else is really honestly we have not bought at the grocery store all summer and it's been amazing i am so blessed for this great abundance that this garden has produced even though I've had some great failures like my green beans and some other stuff like corn, <laughs> I have had some great successes as well. And I like to focus on that because it's those successes that are going to keep me inspired to keep growing and choosing what I grow next. And I am so excited for the fall abundance because we grow a lot of roots and leaves that we absolutely love and brassicas too. 